What's up, divas? What's up, divas? You guys already know who it is. I missed you guys so much. Like, seriously, I am so happy to be back during Real Talk. Like, seriously happy. Um, I do apologize for last Wednesday. There was no Real Talk. I really did not have it in me. Like, honest to God, I did not have it in me. Um, you know, it's Tuesday, of course, when I record these videos. So... That Tuesday morning, I got up extra early. I took my son to the airport at 7 o'clock. His flight left. And I really, honestly, I, I already had it in my mind that I was going to be strong-willed. I knew he was going to be okay. And I was going to do this because, you know, they grow up. They have to move on in life. And I felt the same way when Tati moved back to New York. But she came back three months later. But I felt like, okay, I'm not going to do this now. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to be fine. He's going to go live with my eldest son. And everything is going to be perfect. This is where he needs to be because maybe he can get himself together. And my eldest son can help him ship shape him into shape. This is how I felt. Girl, please, as soon as we was at the airport, when he was in line I was bawling like I started crying and it just like really hit me like he's my middle child and you know how you want them to spread their wings you want them to get out like just get out and get your own go bye you know what I'm saying that's how I be feeling but I just feel like if all my kids lived in the same area around me, they don't even have to necessarily live in this house, but if they live like next door or whatever, I would feel like they was genuinely 110% safe. So I do worry a lot about my kids. Even my son, even though he has his own family, my eldest, he has his own family. I do worry about him and I always check on him. I send him food. You know, when I say food, like I order some pizza hut and I'll pay for it and I have it delivered to his house. Things like that. I do things like that because, you know, as a mother, I always worry about them. So I know my middle son, he's... He He's not as responsible as most, I would say. Like, he's 19. My 15-year-old daughter is more responsible than he is. Like, I would be more... I would feel a lot more comfortable leaving my dog with my 15-year-old than versus my 19-year-old. So you you can understand, like, boys and girls, I guess it's just a different thing. So I really felt like I felt scared for him. Then I felt worried. And I was like, oh, my God, my baby is leaving. So I was so distraught. And I felt like I just lost everything, like, you know... I get into it with him. I kick him out sometimes, but at the end of the day, he's my son and I love him to death and I would rather him he be here with me. So I was really upset about that, like really upset about it. Like I cannot believe he is like over, I think like over 2000 miles away, but you know, I'm pretty sure he'll be fine. I speak to him every single day and he is ready to come back home, but he said if it doesn't work out by Thanksgiving, he's he's coming back home so we we shall see but I do appreciate you guys like allowing me not to do real talk and checking on me and emailing me so I thank everybody for emailing me and checking up on me you know I really needed to gather my thoughts um that particular week in general so I didn't record any videos this is yesterday was actually the first time I recorded a video which was my Dollar Tree video that I posted today Tuesday you know what I'm saying um all the other videos that I posted like three or four days after, those were already pre-recorded. You know, I record like eight videos a day. So I didn't even really feel like even editing or uploading anything. And I think like I was kind of burnt out too. Like every single day I'm doing something, whether it be for YouTube, editing a video. I edit a video every single night. I don't record a video every single day, but I will record about eight videos a day. So I'm always busy or I'm making a wig and I never really have time for myself. I never really am able to sit down on the couch and actually watch a television show. When I am sitting down on the couch watching TV, I'm making a wig because I feel like if I'm going to sit here, I might as well do something, you know, um, constructive. I might as well do something that's worth it. So that, that week, it wasn't even a whole entire week. It was probably until like, I want to say like, Whatever day I uploaded Saturday morning, um, I laid on my couch and I was a bum. And, you know, also my health issues, too. I have a lot of issues going on. My my right knee has been bothering me something terribly. I have bad arthritis and the shots that they were giving me were not working. So I am waiting for the weather to cool down some so that I can get back to doing my three mile walk a day. That really seemed like it helped me a lot. You know what I'm saying? So now I feel like I'm out of shape, which I, I really am now. Um, also... 
Um, you guys know back in November of 2016, I did go in and get a partial hysterectomy and ablation where they just kind of like burn your insides. And I had to do this because my periods were horrible. I had like multiple fibroid tumors. So that was the reason for like my multiple miscarriages um, for my ex-husband and just like a lot of issues. Um, I'm very anemic and things like that. And when I have my period, it's hard for me to leave the house because I really, really can't. Um, and I know that's kind of like TMI, but it's hard for me. So I did get the ablation and it worked for a period of time, but for the past three months, I have never experienced menstrual cramps in my life. Ever since I've had a period when I turned 14, I've never gotten menstrual cramps. So I can't really relate to what people felt when it comes to menstrual cramps. Well, about three months ago, I got these horrible cramps. My period stopped for the day. And then when it came back the next day, it was, it was just horrible clots. And I, I was bent over in a fetal position. It felt like Honest to God, I felt like I was in labor. Now, in order to be in labor, you have to be pregnant. In order to be pregnant, you have to have sex. I haven't had sex in like a year and like, I haven't had sex in like 19, 20 months, okay? So that's not possible. Well, I ended up going to the doctors today and unfortunately I have to go in and get another surgery. I'll be going back in to get a full hysterectomy. This time all of my lady parts will be taken out. Um, it seems like the fibroid tumors, they, they didn't shrink them they just left them so the surgery failed and a lot of women that get these ablation surgeries they end up with these issues a lot of times so they're either going to have to take medication for the rest of their lives or they're going to have to take a hormone pill for six months to make them feel like they're going through menopause or shrink it or they're going to have to get a full hysterectomy had i known this i would have just went with the full hysterectomy in the first place but who i didn't really want my body parts being removed and i really didn't want to be laid up for like six weeks i mean you don't have to necessarily lay in the bed but I just really don't want to feel incompetent for like six weeks so that's why another reason why I put it off well this time I'm gonna have to there's nothing they can do you can always get your fibroid tumors removed they said but if you have multiple amount of them there's no way for them to remove them they just rather take out your lady parts your full hysterectomy and they will die out so um i did have multiple of uh, fibroid tumors but i have even more now so that's not an option that's why i'm getting these pains every month and they're and they last for like three days so like three days out of a period i cannot move i cannot leave the house and that's just like crazy to me like i i just can't i can't cope like that like who the hell wants to lay up for three days like I feel like a bum if I'm in the bed past like 8.30, 9 o'clock. So God forbid if I got to lay up on my couch or on my bed for three days, I'm, I'm really totally pissed. So I'm going to schedule this surgery, hopefully in November. Of, um, November. Um, I can't do it in October because in October, I will be going back to New York City for half of a week, for like four or five days, for a event, an event, an event with RPGshow.com. So I'm really excited about that. There is an event that I am going to be hosting along with Shalom Black, and we are hosting an RPG show event which is really cool tickets are thirty dollars if you guys are interested you can check my instagram page um there'll be goodie bags at the door and all kind of things wig fitting uh i'll be there shalom black will be there um a special um a guest will be raven elise i've never met her but i do know of her um um and a couple of other youtubers not like a really a lot of youtubers i think there's only enough for 100 people so it's pretty a small event open house bar and things like that i'm not really sure the dress code yet so you know they will be flying me in for that mid-october october 14th the, the event is on the 15th of october in manhattan so i'm really excited about that um yes i'm like dumb excited the only thing that i'm not excited about is you guys know i'm a very introverted person like i think i'm probably like the worst introvert in the world because a lot of introverts they they like to keep to themselves and they they don't like big events and then they will go out and they will like socialize with people but they do need to recharge you know what i'm saying and their energy so they like to be alone with me i don't even like to go out and do an event i don't like to go out and do a lot of things so when it seems like for me when i go out into like a crowded area i get kind of a little bit overwhelmed and then it brings my whole vibe down and i kind of get 
get on the angry side and it's not intentionally so I hope to God like if anybody does come that I don't come across as like a stuck up person because that's really not my intentions I'm just kind of like really out of my element and though I don't want to be this type of person I am so that's why I always tell you guys YouTube works really well for me because I'm able to communicate with you guys through camera a lot of people have asked me in many videos when am I going to do a meet and greet when am I going to do a meet and greet I really 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 want to do a meet and greet but honestly I don't know if it's for me because of the type of person I am. It's not that I'm a private person. I'm just like, I'm very, I, I might be kind of private, but I just don't like a lot of people around me. And I'm, I'm more am comfortable around my own, not even my own family, but my own kids. And that's about it. Um, so I'm hoping that this event works out well and, and, ena and it enables me to open up um, and, you know, socialize more and maybe i'll have to take a couple of drinks and a hit of weed <laughs> beforehand but i do hope that um it works out well and i'm able to meet people um in the community you see i'm i'm kind of nervous already about it um and i'm i'm going to ask my cousin my best cousin who was in your city we've grown up together to be my guest because i need someone that i know personally to be there next to me so that i could feel a little bit more comfortable because if i'm there alone and i don't have anybody around then i'm really going to shut down like totally shut down and that's sometimes i feel like i'm just like the worst pathetic person in the world because uh, this is how i am but just like with that vegas trip that we went to um the young lady she kept doing live and shit i can't i i just can't i just i'm i'm like very very like i just don't i just don't do well in like crowded venues at all um, even now I'm vlogging more and it's hard for me. Um, I see people do it all the time, but I have this paranoia with people watching me all the time and looking at me and I'm, tr and I'm trying to convince myself, yo, stop worrying about what they think. Cause you're not the only person that do this. So this is me trying to really convince myself this. And so far it has worked like this much. Okay. But I did go out and I got me a new vlogging camera. I didn't go anywhere. I went on Amazon. Prior to that, I did do some research. Um, I found this really great YouTuber. His, his name is, his YouTube name is your Indian consumer. Now, first of all, I was going to get a Nikon, a Nikon. And it was like $300. I think it was like $300. Versus the Canon 730 um, power side power shot, which was 400 or 500. And then he did a comparison to the Nikon that I was going to get versus the Canon G7. Canon G7 is like $200 more than the Canon that I was going to get. Okay. It's $678 with nothing included. Okay. It doesn't need lenses. It doesn't need that. Well, I'm glad that I did watch him and I ended up not even getting the 730 Canon. I had the um the g7x like he was doing great 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 video review like amazing when you want a good review definitely look on youtube i i was so pleased with his um review and everything so this is my new vlogging camera i got it from amazon now i didn't pay full price for it um i got there you can either get them brand new or you can get a refurbished one so there are there are two of these different styles. There's this one, and then there's the newer, newest one. There's nothing different about the mechanically or software. The only difference is the actual face of it, meaning this. there's a little bit of maybe like a little bit more texture. That's it. Everything else is exactly the same. All the software, the lenses, the... Um, megapixels all that stuff is exactly the same you're just paying for the texture of it and the way the name is written on it so that's the only thing that looks different so you're paying like a hundred dollars more for the face facial construction difference i am concerned about that so i got this one because it's refurbished it has a flip screen which you definitely need if you're doing um vlogging and it's a really great camera um i really really actually do like it and i paid for it because you can get them used or not used. I have a Prime membership, so I got um, I, I got it refurbished, and it was 
um, for refurbished, it was $495 versus $678. Um, and when it's refurbished, it's guaranteed by Prime for 90 days. Even if it's past 90 days, you still can get your money back when something is wrong with the shit. But it works fantastic. And I went ahead and I bought this selfie stick. You need a really good selfie stick if you're going to be vlogging. Okay. I bought this from Best Buy. It was $10 cheaper than on Amazon because it was only on sale. Other than that, it would have been like $10 or more. It's a really good one. It opens up at the bottom so you can actually sit it on a table. But it gives super long. I mean, you know, it, it'll go up. The handle will go up and up and up. And it tilts. It's a really good one. So it was $30 bucks at... Um, at um you know best buy but i really do like it so this is my new vlogging camera and i have vlogged on it so far so the only issue with me with vlogging is a bitch got to edit the shit okay so i think i'm just going to just edit daily and i'm not really going to do too much vlogging but yeah so but other than that um so that has been my week also <sighs> So I did post up a makeup video. I told you guys about Oxley.com where you can get a bunch of free shit if you want free stuff, free makeup. If you do social media like Facebook posts or Instagram or Twitter or YouTube, you can definitely get yourself some free makeup. I did post that. Now, I got a bunch of free shit, like amazing, good, high-end free shit from Kevin Aquan, Mac, um, Becca Cosmetics, like, you know what I'm saying? Good free shit, Lancome, stuff like that. But here's the thing. You can only, so say you wanted to do your whole entire face with all these products. Now, I've been on there a minute, so I can get up to eight things. And then once I get eight things of whatever I want, I got to make sure I review them. And once I review them, then my points come back. So I, all my points are used up. I got eight things, all this good stuff. I probably had like five things from Mac. I had Becca Cosmetics. I had Lancome. I had Kevin O'Quan. So I had like six things from Mac, okay? Okay. And and that all made my eight. So I did not know that you could not use that same video link more than five times. So I have like two more products that I had to review and I couldn't use the video link because you can only use the video link five times. So anyway, so you guys about to see me do my makeup, somewhat my makeup, because I wasn't able to use my video link. So it's like I never reviewed these products, which I actually did. But before we even get into that, I already posted this in my Dollar Tree video, but I'm about to show you guys this once again. So this girl don't be like, oh, well, you didn't review the fucking diet coffee. So me and Monty posted a video yesterday. It was our Dollar Tree video. And it was basically at the end, I showed a review on some stuff that I did get in the mail. Now, this young lady named Jessica, she is from Revital U, and it is a diet coffee, okay? She had been emailing me every single day after I agreed to do a video review for her. She said she's going to send me a sample of their product. Now, when you tell somebody, I'm going to send you a sample of a diet product to let you know how it works, you think, okay, a sample... People, when you say sample, it doesn't necessarily have to mean a sample. A sample could mean a full-size amount of product. Just like when people from AliExpress send me hair to make a wig, they write on the thing, it's a sample to test it out. It doesn't have to necessarily mean a sample size. So when she said this to me, especially because it's diet related and you need to let you need to know how it works out, I figured she would send me at least a month's supply. Especially if you emailing me every motherfucking day asking me, did I go to my post office box and pick it up? Now, first of all, my post office box is two miles from my house. Don't be motherfucking emailing me every single day asking me, did you pick it up? How's it working out for you? Hey, just checking on you to see if you got your coffee. These are the things. These are the keynotes. To blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when I get to my post office, I was ignoring her motherfucking emails. When I get to my post office box and I get this. It ain't even in a box. This is it. You, you you see what I'm saying? It says right there, and I can show you the address because it says my post office box address on it, and this is where all my stuff is mailed to. So if you guys ever want to mail me anything, love letters or whatever, it's my post office. This is what it was. It was taped together. You see the piece of tape here. So I was like, Revital you? what is this? Then I see her name on the front, Jessica. I was like, what the fuck? And I see this girl drinking some coffee. I said, I know this bitch didn't. I know this is a review, but I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. I know she did not harass me for like a week and a half straight to get to my post office box 
for a three day sample. She really did send me a sample of some Revital You Brew weight loss, weight management coffee. Okay, now, first of all, lose weight, gain energy, discover all day focus. It's all possible with Revital You Brew. Where in your life of any. Where in your mind, where in your life, where on God's green earth do you think that three-day sample, literally three-day sample is going to allow me to be able to tell you guys, it worked. I lost a half of an ounce. So when I got this and I was like, no, the fuck she didn't. She been fucking harassing me for, th for, for like a week, day, a week straight or more over some three-day fucking samples. So when I get home, there's another email. I said to her, listen, I'm not trying to be rude to you, but I got your mail for that little bit of sample you sent me. There's no reason for you to keep emailing me every single day. Please stop emailing me, okay? I, I was blunt like that, and I might have been rude, but I'm just saying, don't fucking email me every single goddamn day over some fucking sample and you really think that I'm supposed to promote this? Who the hell do you think I am? All right. Now there might be some people that'll be like, oh my God, I love it. I lost a half of a pound with this. I, you see that I didn't even take this because for what? You only sent me a three day supply. This is not going to do anything for me. Things that if you if you want to find out if anything works, you have to use it for at least a week, two weeks to 30 days for it to get into your system, to build up into your system to work. This shit ain't going to do nothing for me but have me running off to the bathroom because there's caffeine in it. And anything that has caffeine in it is liable to make you lose weight and shit your motherfucking brains out. OK, now I know, you know, I me, you know me, guys. I love anything that's easy going and make you or help you lose weight fast. That's why a bitch stay taking hydroxy cut. These make me lose weight really really well okay and I've always taken them I stopped taking them for a while like I did stop for like a couple of months recently and I gained some of the weight back because I haven't been doing shit but three day supply so I'm supposed to drink this for three days one each day and then come on here and tell you guys how much motherfucking energy I got from it how much motherfucking weight I done lost a half an ounce a half an ounce I'm not even gonna give you a full ounce so that's what I'm supposed to do when I seen this I was like I'm not even about to bother taking no three day supply you out your rabbit ass mind that this is what no so this is my review and I know it's probably definitely not professional but what's not professional is you emailing me every single day and still to this day emailing me talking about well you should be on day three and this is how you should feel no bitch you should not be emailing me no motherfucking more once i send you this video link i bet you won't never email me again or you might say some smart shit and i'm not the one to be with that smart shit okay so i'm not you know what i don't really promote i don't promote any of those Fit teas and tummy teas or none of that shit. I don't promote none of that shit, okay? That's just not me. I, I've gotten plenty of them from people, but let me tell you something. As soon as you stop taking them shits, you'll be bloated like a motherfucking whale. So I don't promote any of them. I'm not about to sit out here and lie to you guys and say something works. This is what works for me. Don't nobody pay me to use this. Hydroxycut does not send this to me for free. I fucking pays my cash for this. I go on Amazon now because a young lady told me in one of my videos of how I lost weight fast that she you can get it on Amazon much cheaper than buying it from Walmart. I go on Amazon and I get 150 pills for 20 bucks versus 60 or 90 pills for 20 bucks. And I thank her for telling me that info, but I don't get promoted for this. I don't get sponsored for this. This is spent. I buy this with my own heart or cash. And this is what I've been purchasing for years. I don't, I don't use these religiously. I stopped taking them when I get to my weight loss. I was at 225 pounds and I went down to 203, okay, within like two months. Now I'm back to 215 because I haven't been taking them. I just haven't gotten around to purchasing them and I kind of got lazy, okay? Even though they're sitting here on my desk, I kind of got lazy. But I, I started taking them again. So yeah. bear with me one second. So I apologize, you guys. Um, Yeah. I had the AC guy coming because the AC, my central air conditioning, is leaking through my entire upstairs to downstairs. So I don't know what's going on. But anyway, so yes, that was one of the free products. But also, like I was telling you guys about Oxley, if you want some free shit, definitely check them out. So I wasn't able to use my video link for this right here, which is the Max, MAC Next to Nothing Face Color and Color Medium. 
dark medium dark this is not a foundation it's more or less like a, a fluid illuminator so if you want something on but not too much on then you can definitely try this out. I like this because I'll use this the um, studio fix with it that they also sent me especially because you know what I don't really like to wear cake face um, it's so hot out here so I don't do cake face um, I just, I'm too old for cake face. You know, I be having like my little fine lines and shit. But also, they did send me this Kevin Aquan Contour Book Volume 2. Now, if you guys are familiar with makeup, you know, Kevin Aquan is like a makeup artist. He teaches, etc., etc. This is a really great palette. It comes with contour, highlight, eye highlight, contour, and stuff like that. I really do like it. I'll definitely link the video that I actually did showcasing this but it's a really great book there are some things in this that i really don't like like i'm not a really a cool person so i don't like to contour with these two right here one is cream and one is a dry powder but these are cool colors and i'm i don't like cool colors i'm more or less like a warm color person um and it just goes for my skin tone okay it goes what's best so this is the color that i normally will contour with and you can see the difference it's more of a red tone in this okay but my foundation will be like a cool tone a yellowish tone so yeah we're gonna get into that while we do this real talk video so just be aware if you see like a strange old white guy in the background he's not my boyfriend he's fixing the AC and I know you guys see my hole in my shirt this is my favorite t-shirt I've had this for over 11 years and it's finally given out on me I'm just gonna sew it you know what I'm saying I do have a drink so mm-hmm so as used as norm if you want a real talk video about yourselves you can always send me an email to muffin is my lover 2012 at gmail.com please make sure you guys put in the subject line real talk so that way I know that it's real talk and also if you want to change the names of the people that you is talking about then by all means go ahead and let me know other than that let's get into this real talk okay <laughs> So I think this one is going to be pretty long because it looks like it. So, hello April, I'm writing to you regard regarding the challenges I'm currently facing with my eldest daughter, my son-in-law and their child who is my grandchild my one and only grandchild. I will go ahead and change our names for you. My name is Gigi, my daughter Tiara, her husband, my son-in-law, we're gonna call him Kurt, and their son, which is my grandson, we'll call him CJ. A little background on myself and the situation I am 45 years old, a mother of two adult daughters, my eldest being 28 and my youngest who is 23. I've had my first child at 17 years old. Her father was murdered when she was just one years old. Aww. My second daughter's father was incarcerated when she was four and was not released until she had turned 19. I had to raise two young ladies on my own with help from my own mother at a young age. I never complained. I just had to do what was best for me and my girls with what I had so I could make sure they would grow up and succeed better than I did. That meant, yes, having government assistance, working two to three jobs at a time, making sure that they got to school every day, even when I did not have a car for 10 years, getting on buses and trains. With everything I had to go through and do raising my daughters, I now feel as though what I set out to do work being Tiara is a graduate with her master's and my youngest, a med school graduate, both have good paying jobs, cars, and their own homes. Getting to the situation at hand, my eldest daughter, Tiara, met a man named Kurt, and they have gotten married when Tiara was 24, and Kurt was 27 at the time. A year or two later, they welcomed my first grandson, CJ. When they began dating, Kurt seemed like the perfect gentleman for my daughter and was comfortable and loving to our family. Kurt is biracial, his mother is European and Latin, his father is Nigerian both retired and are retired and are still married to this day while me and my girls are african american and i currently work part time in billing everything was fine with kurt until a little while after my grandson was born 2 years ago 
After Tiara's maternity leave from work was up, she asked if I would watch my grandson during the day even though Kurt worked from home but could not give his full attention to CJ and work at the same time. Of course I said yes, my little grandson is so precious to me. I love being a grandmother, especially to that little man. Sound like me. It started off fine the first year. Now that my grandson is two, it has become apparent that Kurt, his father, does not agree with me as a grandmother or me watching CJ. My grandson is in his terrible two stages, which means tantrums, very hyperactive, and getting into stuff. Although he is going through that stage, I have never spanked or whooped him. Only time out. Take his toys away for a few hours or take a nap. Now, April, I am old school. I believe in spankings. That is how I discipline my girls at times, and they turned out fine. But I don't do my grandson like that because I never want to step on my daughter's toes as a mom. My grandson really doesn't need spankings at his age. And besides, I can't bring myself to spank my precious grandbaby. As of now, it seems like everything I do when watching CJ has become an issue with his father, Kurt. For example, when CJ starts one of his tantrums, I will say, don't start CJ, or Gigi's going to put you in time out. Or I will say, you ready for night night? You need a nap. As of lately, it seems when I say that or give CJ a warning, Kurt, his father, will come out of his office, look at me with a look of disgust, almost and say CJ come in here with me or while looking directly at me like I did or said something wrong to my grandson. One day when Tiara got home from work she said Kurt had texted her and said he didn't think it was beneficial or a good idea to make CJ take a nap every time he acts up and if I could find another approach. I was very confused on why my daughter was talking to me as I did something wrong. And also, why couldn't Kurt tell me that himself? Another time is when I was cleaning their home and CJ started to cry and have a tantrum. So I put on music and said, come on CJ, help Gigi clean up. I put music on because it calms him down and distracts him from having a tantrum. I put on some Monica and Missy and he was jamming to it while I cleaned. Here comes Kurt out of his office again and tells me to please put on something less explicit for CJ and to turn it down. I didn't know Monica was explicit, so I figured all my other music would not be to his liking, so I just cut the music off altogether. Yeah, I ain't never heard Monica being explicit, but okay. Five minutes later, I see Kurt come out of his office again and standing by the entertainment system. <clears throat> Next thing I know, Bruno Mars and later Adele was blasting. I guess he didn't like my urban music and it had nothing to do with being explicit nor loud. Even lunchtime for CJ has become a problem for Kurt. I would often make CJ peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, hot dogs, mac and cheese, or top ramen noodles, or something of that sort. And CJ likes it, and that's just fine. Now, Kurt says, those aren't really nutritious meals, and maybe try something like apples and peanut butter, granola bars, or rice and veggies. I told Tiara, and once again, she took his side and made it seem like I was at fault, saying, Mom, those meals aren't nutritious. That's why poor people in the hood eat. That's what poor people in the hood eat when money is low. I wanted to slap the taste out of her mouth when she said that, but I, I just said, you must have forgot those hood meals is what you were raised on, and you seem pretty healthy to me. Well, the last straw for me April was when my youngest daughter who agrees with me tried to talk to Tiara about Kurt's ways and was told by Tiara that Kurt just feels like my style of parenting was outdated and he didn't want me to have much influence on CJ my grandson because they they don't want him to grow up bad or hood he also said he is just trying to make sure CJ sees and knows he has a father and he's growing up in a two-parent household well I can't while I can't teach him that being that I never had my own father in my home or my girl's father and he doesn't want CJ to think being a single mother is acceptable or the normal. When my youngest told me that I was livid, when my youngest daughter told me that I was livid and had to call Tiara on that right away. When I called and asked her, she told me that I was being irrational and Kurt had very valid points. Then she went on to say her and Kurt talked it over and decided they would hire a trained nanny or sitter that has experience 
with a two-year-old and me watching CJ during the day was not needed anymore. April, that hurt me to the deepest of my core and I couldn't do anything but hang up in Tiara's, in, in Tiara's face and start crying. I love my grandson to death. Since he was born, he brightens up my life. I can't imagine not being able to see him or be around him often and that is exactly what's happening. I have not even seen Tiara or my grandson in a little, in a little over two months. When I call Tiara, she is very short and brief, always on the phone. On the phone, I say, when can I speak to CJ? Can and she puts him on the phone. Of course, he has his jibber-jabber talk. But even so, she takes the phone, and it's always an excuse of why they have to call me back or go. My youngest daughter tells me not to worry about it, and it's their loss, Mom. Do not let Kurt or Tiara's bougie bullshit get to me. But I wouldn't be a grandmother or a true mother or true to myself as a person if I just stopped caring about my grandson altogether. So what is your thoughts and advice, April? Should I just do what my youngest keeps telling me to let Kurt and Tiara live in their high class world and just be a grandmother on birthdays and holidays? Should I try to work something out with them and try their approach and maybe my style of parenting is outdated? Please give me your honest thoughts and advice on my family situation. I would like to spend some quality time with my grandson and I am getting impatient and saddened by this mess altogether. Thank you, Gigi. You know what? I am so sorry, Gigi, that you are going through that with your daughter. Now, first of all, you know something? I can totally relate because my grandson is two years old. Now, you know, I have two grandsons. I have one that is four, and then I have one that is two. My two-and-a-half-year-old, he lives here with me. I watch him while my daughter goes to work. And let me tell you something. That's so funny that she says that because today while we were at lunch, I was saying to my daughter, we just talking. And, you know, I nicknamed my grandson Tinky. His name is Cameron, but we call him Tinky. And Tati was saying how you know Tinky needs to go to a daycare or to um, pre-k so you know he can make some friends and I was like he likes hanging out with grandma she was like well he needs to make some friends of his his own age and I was like yeah I understand that but I could be his age for him I said you know but I understand that and you know I, like I said I said well, you know something being able to stick and hang out with my grandson during the day keeps me alive you know what I'm saying because when my kids are at school and at work I have nobody here with me but my grandson, okay? And I have been here before on, on numerous occasions alone by my damn self. And let me tell you something. It is not a good feeling. However, she is, my daughter is right. He does need to go and make his own little friends. Not He don't have to go every single day, you know what I'm saying? Because it is costly. But he can go like a couple of hours a week to make some friends. But... I don't know when parenting ever became outdated. You know, there are some things that we may not be able to do like we used to do or like our parents used to do because I'm 43 years old. So I can understand, you know, however, you ain't about to go around beating the crap out of somebody else's kid. You know, like she said, like Gigi said, she old school. We used to get whippings. My mama used to put her foot in my ass and I used to do the same thing to my kids. However, we ain't about to do that to somebody else's kids. Even though that's our grandchildren, we don't go around putting our foot in their asses and beating on them like that. And especially at two years old, who are you to be beating on a two-year-old? They're two. They really don't know much. So I don't really think like her parenting or her ways is outdated. He's two years old. So she put on some Monica and some Missy Elliott so that it could distract him from crying. I get it. I do the same thing for my, my grandson. I don't put on Missy Elliott and Monica. But what I do say is you want to get something to eat? You want a snack? And he'd be like, food? As long as you say food to him, he is distracted he is not crying anymore he could care less so everybody's approach to kids is totally different however the one thing that kind of messed me up when she said that it's hood food top ramen peanut butter and jelly and shit like that first of all i don't live in the hood i'm i might be from the projects but i got a whole big ass motherfucking case of 42 um but um top ramens from sam's club and i like top ramen okay Y'all be, some people be thinking like they too good for Thai ramen. It ain't nothing but pasta noodles. That's all the fuck it is. And it comes with a seasoned pouch. Bitch, if you put your own shit to it, it ain't Thai ramen no more. It's motherfucking pasta noodles, okay? That's all the fuck it is. But, you know, so let me tell you something. It's unfortunate that you gotta go along and you gotta do whatever your, your kids say. It's sad because this young generation, they always think that hiring a babysitter and hiring a nanny is gonna solve their motherfucking problems. Bitch, let me tell you something. That that bitch that you hiring is paid to watch him. She paid to care for him. That's not genuine care and that's not genuine love, okay? And maybe she ain't watch all of the motherfucking shows 
that have, I got this free too, that have these crazy ass nannies and babysitters um, doing all kind of crazy stuff to people's kids. Yeah, you come and you hire them and you, you check them out. You got their references and all that good stuff. So now, hold on, before I even continue, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Face to Nothing by MAC, which is in the color medium dark. Um, so you hire them, you get all of their credentials, their references and all of this good stuff and you think they just great. Come to find out your kids are being abused by some psychopath that you paid to be a psychopath. So you basically paid this bitch to watch your kid and beat the shit out of them that makes no motherfucking sense to me personally if it was me i had to have a babysitter and i had to send my kids to daycare and i had to send my kids to a babysitter but if i had my way and if my mom lived in the same vicinity and the same part of new york as i did because she lived in new york city and i moved upstate but if she was around you trust and believe i would be using my mom to my advantage if she would to allow me if my mom was to watch my kids i would rather my mother watch my kids than have some paid bitch watch my motherfucking kids okay so now, you know, it's sad that a lot of these young children rely on nannies to take care of their child and raise their child. That's what it's all about now. Nobody wants to put into family values in anything. And that's where it at. There's no moral. There's no family values in anything. It's just, well, I'm going to just dish out this money to you and you'll do as you see fit. Now, I don't really know if little CJ is going to be good. I don't really know if he's going to really get the nurturing that he, that he needs. So now you got some fucking strange bitch coming into your home. You don't even know she's going through your shit. It, but she's watching your kid she doesn't even genuinely care for him that's it's all about the paycheck okay this is where it all comes into play what you have in your home now is a paycheck what you did have in your home was a motherly grandmotherly loving caring person okay and though her husband may not feel like your freaking parenting skills are on his level I'm sorry but Bruno Mars is a little bit explicit he talking about sex by the fire and all of this shit okay I have to change it up when I sing that song around Mumsy because even though she's 10 I really don't want her to know about having sex by the fire and that, that song he got going on I'm just saying she liked the song but I mean I'm just saying sex by the fire at night I don't I, I really don't feel comfortable singing that around my 10 year old let alone a 2 year old so we got Bruno Mars and Adele asked, talking about, hello, you want to have sex by the fire, you please? No, I'm just saying. You know something? Unfortunately, Gigi, we have to sometimes let these little young motherfuckers live and learn. Because I swear... They always think that we never know what the fuck we talking about. We don't know shit in general. I get this a lot, even from my own kids. Not, thank God, not my grandson Tati's mother. Not, not me, not my grandson's mother, Tati. I don't get that from my daughter, Tati. She don't be looking at me like, I think I know everything. I don't, I don't think she does. I, she doesn't. We we have like the, we we have like the same type of um, relationship, and we have like the same type of parenting skills. You know what I mean? Um, she's kind of like me, but the same things that I speak of and I feel very highly of, she is the same way. She's a very low key, down to earth type of person. So, and she's damn sure not bougie. And if she had her way, she probably would. Tinky would probably spend all his days with me while she was at work. You know, but yeah, he he does need to have some friends, make little friends of his own, and that's definitely understandable. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, that's her child and that is your grandson and you have every right to see him now What I would do is I would let her know listen Tiara I Understand your values and minds is a little bit different. However That is my grandson and I do have a right to spend time with him and I would really like a, um, to Spend time with him. I have not seen him in over two months You know, I don't have to babysit for you, but I would like to spend the day with my grandson I would like to take him to lunch movies or whatever you know saying that is your grandparent right however just like your daughter your younger daughter said let her bougie ass and her bougie ass husband learn on their own 
they're going to need you, my dear, way before you need them. And it's unfortunate that you have to be like that. And I say this, too, about my own kids. They think that I feel like I know everything. Sometimes not all of them, but some of them do. And you know what? Or they feel like, oh, I'm not going to need you. You you too old. Your ways and your way you think and the way you do things is old school. And I have to tell them, <sighs> It mainly be the boys that feel this way. Mainly my middle son, Wuzzle, who's, who's 19. He feels like I know him. He feels like I don't know anything. He does. He, he always thinks that he knows everything. And I have to tell him, you always think you know everything. You think that I don't know shit. How you think you think that I made it this far? I'm 43 years old. You think that I made it this far from not knowing shit? I know more the fuck than you think I do. I know more than your fucking black ass know, okay? And that's true. I might not know all this hip, huh? hibbity, hibbity, hop shit, all these bougie, bad and bougie songs, or all of this slang. I don't need to know that shit, all of it, okay? I don't need to. I, I knew what the fuck I needed to know when I was growing up your age. I had my own shit going the fuck on. I guarantee you the shit that I slanged on and hippity hot, you didn't know nothing to fuck about. Okay, so same thing. But I still do know more than you because I've been here on this earth for 43 years versus 19. So, just checking for the AC guy. A lot of them think that what we do is outdated or, you know, we don't know much. We don't know what the fuck we talking about. We too old school. You got to let them live and learn on their own. I guarantee you that her crying ass going to come crying back to you needy as a motherfucker. So she going to have, so she going to have some strange Mary Poppins ass bitch watching her child. So we're going to use this Kevin Aquan concert book now. She's going to have some strange Mary Poppins ass bitch watching her son. And I say strange because and this is just the eye contour right here. I say strange because she knows nothing about this lady. So you're going to hire you're going to pay out your motherfucking pockets to have a crazy lunatic up in your house. How much you want to bet? And now we're going to use this. This is just the console that I wear. I do apologize, you guys. I'm just checking on my AC guy. Um, how much you want to bet? This bitch is going to be a weirdo. I, me personally, honestly, I wouldn't let any strange person into my home. Now, mind you, you have the husband that works there. He, he works from home. So maybe he's able to keep a good eye on the little boy and a good eye on the slash nanny. That's great. Ooh, what do you motherfucking do? You know what I'm saying? That's great, 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 great. However, do you really honestly think this is the contour powder? I don't see. I don't really like this. You see, because it's cool. Now you see what I'm saying? I don't like cool colors. You see that? I don't like that. So so okay. So now you got you got you got the father. He's in his own little office, in his own little world, and you got him in there, and you got Mary Poppins' ass. I'm going to just call her Mary the fucking Poppins, because that's what the fuck she is. She's a, she's a purchased nanny, okay? There's nothing like family. However, these kids in these day and ages, they feel like once they get a little bread and butter in their pockets, that they on top of the world, and they think they know more than you do, and they think that money controls everything, and that money makes the world go round, and that money will make their kids grow up in a better place, and that somebody that is trained. So here's the difference between a trained motherfucking nanny and a real mother. A trained nanny, sometimes, most of the time, don't have no motherfucking kids. Everything they learn is from a goddamn textbook or from some type of seminar or class, okay? Let me tell you this much. <laughs> Bitches like me, I learned that shit from trial and error and from growing up and getting my ass whooped and raising my own goddamn kids. Me, personally, I think that's the best advice that one could ever give and have. Now, you got Mary Poppins, who's trained. It's going to be like, Billy, time out. CJ, CJ, be nice and time out. Meanwhile, CJ is throwing himself all on public streets and having temper tantrums, okay? Listening to fucking Blues Clues and Barney and Peppa Pig, okay? Peppa motherfucking pig. While Grandma Gigi is at home listening to Monica and could have made him some top rhyme and put his little ass down a nap and he would have been just perfectly fine. Yeah, he might not have had apple slices and motherfucking peanut butter, all right? But who gives a fuck about all of that shit? At the end of the day, it's all about love and respect and how a little kid 
ends up being. Now you got him fucking growing up with some goddamn nanny who don't know a lick about him. I'm just saying. Me, personally, I would never want a nanny around my kid. If I had to choose, it would definitely be my own flesh and blood watching my, my, my child. And that's how it is with, with me. Like, you know, I watch my grandson. Uh, when my daughter goes to work and it's just me and him and this is who he knows at least she knows that he's safe and he'll be okay and if anything goes down i'm gonna make sure that little tinky man my grandson is okay now i don't know about cj and mary poppins mary poppins could be watching him some motherfucking burglar break in mary poppins ass might run out the door first and leave little cj behind grandma april Grandma Muffins ain't about to let that you go know, down. You know, like I'm saying, Grandma Muffins ain't gonna let that go down. I'm gonna make sure that Tinky Man is okay. This ain't about a dollar and 15 cents. This is about my flesh and blood taking care of them. But you know something? Oh, my rag on top is like loose. Why y'all didn't tell me that shit? Okay, well, that's just gonna have to be just like that for the video. But you know something, Gigi? Just like your daughter said, you're going to have to leave it alone and let them learn on the hard way. Because what's going to happen is your daughter's going to have to figure it out on her own. And unfortunately, you know, I didn't really want to say this about her husband, Kurt. But it seems like she decides with him and she lets him rule her. Now, yeah, there is a man in the relationship and there is a woman in the relationship. However, you ain't about to run me and run all over me and tell me how to raise the child. If that's the case, nigga, you could watch him while you work for motherfucking home. Stop acting like you better than thou, okay? But here's the thing with your daughter. She got a husband that's running shit. And, of course, like you said in the beginning, when you first met him, he was nice. He was cool. He was attentive. He was caring about the family. And then, once you guys kind of, like, got official, official, like, meaning he became officially into the family because they had a kid together, his whole persona, his whole attitude changed. That's because he had a baby. And he feel like he could just run shit. Let me tell you something, Gigi. Stay the fuck out of it. Unfortunately, it's like that, and that's how it is. I love and miss my oldest son, Jerron. You know what I'm saying? He has his own kid, too. But I don't know why his little baby mother don't like me no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's her business. What she do is what she do. But you know what? This is what I do. I stay the fuck out of it, and I mind my goddamn business, okay? However, just don't come on this side of the woods or this neck of the woods trying to disrespect ever because it ain't about that. I leave them the fuck alone. When I go there in October and I go to see my son and my grandson, I hope to God, for her sake, that she don't disrespect and come out of pocket. Because a bitch like me will definitely come out of motherfucking pocket, bank, and everything else, okay? So I just leave her the fuck alone. Like, now you don't like me, but when you was living here in my house, we was all hunky-dory. But, you know, it is what it is. You think I done called the people on you, but no, bitch. Fucking lighten yourself up and... Just grow the fuck up. She doesn't like me now. And that's okay. I don't know why. Because I was always on her side. You know what I'm saying? When anything popped off. Because I know my son was doing some dumb shit. But now she doesn't like me. But hey, it is what it is. So you know what I do? I leave them the fuck alone. And I talk to my son when I talk to him. Or when he calls me. And I talk to my grandson when she's probably not around. That's probably when I be talking to him. But, you know, she's got her mother there that watches him. And that's great. That's kudos to them. But, you know, something, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to just continue to be April. And you continue to be you, Gigi. And don't allow them to make you feel any lesser of a person. If they feel like your shit is outdated, then that's fine. In the long run, your outdated fucking parental ways is going to be needed more than you think and more than they know. Because they don't get tired of parent Mary Poppins. They don't get tired of parent Mary Poppins. I guarantee you. And on top of that, they don't really know. Mary Poppins. How you fucking gonna hire somebody? I'm sorry, but me, as cheap as I am, I'd rather keep my mother watching my kid. I'm pretty sure that you are being paid to watch him, but that's not what we do as grandparents. We don't charge our kids to watch our, our grandchildren. That's not what the fuck we do. If anybody charging their grand, charging their children to watch their grandchildren, then I don't know what the fuck is up with them. I mean, each person is different, you know what I mean, to each his own, but I'm not about to charge my kids to watch my grandchildren. However, I'm just saying, I would rather have my mother watching my son or daughter versus Mary Poppins coming up into my house, going through my shit, and mistreating my child. You don't really know. He's two years old. He can't fucking talk. 
Better get that nanny cam ready. They better get that nanny cam ready. But you know what you need to do? You need to have a nice conversation with your daughter. Fuck trying to keep calling her on the phone. If that's not what she's going to be, if she's always trying to get off the phone or why she can't speak to you, then you know what? Don't even text her. Send her a nice email letting her know how you feel. Or you can even better yet go old school on her and send her a fucking handwritten letter of how you feel. So that way her husband can see it come in the mail and so can she. All right, and you can let her know along with her ass how the fuck you feel about the whole situation. And you don't even have to let them know, like, hey, I'm, I, I'm watching for you. So you don't even have to go into full detail. But the only thing you need to go into full detail about is, that's my grandson, and I would like to spend time with him. So, I understand you want to have Mary Poppins. You don't have to say Mary Poppins, but I understand you want to have a nanny that's probably maybe younger, that has different values, that's about to cut up peanut butter wedges and celery sticks and apple slices and all of that good stuff for daycare, daytime. But I still need to spend time with my grandson. And that's it. Send her a nice long letter and see how that goes out. But don't go out of your way and don't go bending backwards. Don't change yourself for who you are. You are who you are. But sometimes you have to let these young people know. When you stoop down to their level and you give in to them, they're not learning. So you need to allow her to learn on their own and she'll figure it out on the long run. But in the meantime, make sure you get your quality time in with your grandson. Send her a letter. But don't be kissing nobody's ass. You know what I'm saying? She gonna have Mary Poppins over there watching the baby. Ooh, child. Mary motherfucking Poppins. Ooh, I am too kind to a jaw. Ooh, ooh. Contoured up. Okay, so now we're going to read the next one. All right, you guys. So, hey, April, for the purpose of this email, you can call me Drea. All names mentioned are um, synonyms for, um, are... For privacy purposes. I don't know what she said, but they basically changed. I'll be using curse words at times. Okay, so she like forewarned me. Okay. I decided to return to school and transition in my career field. I'm non-clinical, but work in a hospital setting in administration. I'm grateful that I was able to get employed straight out of my healthcare program. I was enrolled because many people were telling me it was not easy to, it was not easy to become employed straight out of school, which is true. Thanks to God for me networking and being connected with the right people. I was hired two weeks after complete, completing a very difficult program. I am aware that no workplace is perfect, especially dealing with so many women with different and difficult personalities. But most places i worked never allowed so much drama to interfere with production. I had to be trained for this position, but the trainer was resistant, which was, was resistant with training me properly. Let's call her She Beast. She Beast has to report to Snow Beast, who turns a blind eye to problems because She Beast picks up all her slack so that she doesn't have to lift a finger at work. So basically, She Beast is the puppet to Snow Beast. To Snow Beast, like. Okay, my boss is, let's call her Snake. Because she just adds fire to the flames by talking about everybody behind their back. Then whispering in my ear about who I should and should not trust. Oh. Snake is not trying to fix the problem. And she has some resentment towards me for being respected and hired by upper management. It's been one year since I've worked for this department. And I know the only reason I've lasted this long is because I work from home and only have to deal with everyone at our quarterly meetings. Rewind, she beast half-assed trained me, criticizes everything I did, and kept making snide remarks about how bad my wigs look. Oh, shit. Yes, April, I love wearing wigs for many reasons, but my natural hair is waist length. This female just tried to set me up for failure. She called her female. I would have been like, this bitch. Okay? This, I'm going to call her that. This bitch just tried to set me up for failure. She beast, she beast, bragged about how this company pays her top dollar to do what she does. And she always turned the training sessions into all about her and her personal life. So, meanwhile, while she beast was supposed to be training, she was talking about her. It don't matter what the fuck it was. It was all about her ass. Majority of the time, I kept silent and let she be brag. 
In the same breath, she beast would constantly complain about how horrible of a job management was doing, and she always seemed angry about it. Mind you, this bitch makes close to six figures, and at the time, she was planning for a wedding. One thing that she would have, one would think that she would have been the happiest person on earth. Sadly, she seems so bothered by my joyful existence. Looks doesn't matter to me. I'm cool with anyone that is respectful. On the other hand, she beast is dark skinned, unattractive, and obese with a nasty, filthy attitude. She does not give attitude to her white boss or white upper management, which leads me to believe that she chooses who to act callous and rude to towards. <laughs> Snow Beast is white, morbidly obese, and extremely lazy at work, so much so that the quality goes downhill because of her employee, She Beast, the dark skinned girl. One meeting, Snow Beast took up a huge amount of time discussing, discussing attitudes and how you treat others at work due to a number of complaints from other people about She Beast. Snow Beast had everyone close their eyes to meditate, taken away from the business meeting. Snake, my boss, is not as lazy as Snow Beast, but she is very sneaky, deceitful, and calculating. She'll smile in your face and act like she's trying to help you resolve a problem while stabbing you in the back all at the same time. Bottom line, I'm not only attractive, physically fit, intelligent, but most important, I treat people with kindness and try to help when I can. When I walk into a room no other and no other woman are smiling, I'm the first that will smile at everyone because I'm genuinely happy and thankful for life and just basically waking up. Recently, new upper management replaces the old. Guess what? I immediately connected with new management and they want me to be promoted. This is great, but it seems that I'll have to get trained by the she beast again and deal with her all over again, all her bullshit that comes with it. Ordinarily, I'm able to ignore a lot of the bullshit as long as no one puts their hands on me. Disrespect my kids or fuck with my money. In this case, she beast could possibly fuck with my money by not training me properly. So when new upper management asked me, was anything in the way of me being promoted? I came forth and told her, yes, that would be she beast. I shared all of my experience from my start date till now and explained the reason I avoid contact with her because of her attitude and refusal to teach. The old Drea, which is me, not me, but the person who's writing, was raised around violence and had no problems beating a bitch down with no regrets. The new Drea has moved past a lot of the hood bullshit, worked on improving herself, and I'm a mother and fiance to a great man. Until I venture out and work for myself, I do need to work for others right now. These bum bitches have a few coins and think this justifies degrading other people who are climbing up the corporate ladder just like they did. I hate to say it, but most of the real troublemakers and haters are self-hating black dark-skinned females. I know this because she beast and themselves and them other dark-skinned women, always talking about how they have to stay out of the sun because they don't want to get darker. When I come to work wearing my real hair one day, I heard, a, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard of these bitches came to my work area to question why I wear wigs when I have long, pretty hair. What the fuck? Pretty hair is ignorant. Slave speech. I didn't respond because I didn't understand this was so important with all the crises that's going on in the world. Even Snow Beast wobbled out of her office to join in on the amusement about something as petty as why I don't wear my real hair instead of a wig. 
shaking my damn head. I'm accustomed to working with all types of people, but these mofos are too ignorant and psychotic for me. I'm working, to, I'm trying to work at this place long enough to learn what I need so I can leave and work for a different company. April, I know you're going to keep it 100%. What advice do you have for dealing with catty, insecure, bitchy women at work without having to commit acts of violence or lose your job? Thanks for your time. Girl. So, Drea. Seemed like she worked with a whole bunch of catty bitches, okay? You know what's so funny? Y'all know I used to work at a health care center for like nine fucking years, okay? Nine years. And there were some catty bitches. There were dark skinned catty bitches. There was white catty bitches. There was Hispanic catty bitches. There was light skinned catty bitches. There was some catty bitches. Me, I always kept to myself because for one, I was the one that was there the longest. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them didn't last too long. They would come and go. You know what I'm saying? They just didn't last too long. They just, the job wasn't for them or they just didn't work out for the job. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't pulling their weight. I always kind of like kept to myself because you know what? I came to work. I didn't come here for no catty ass bitches and I damn sure didn't come here for no bullshit and foolishness. That was just my thing. I don't come here to work for that. The first time that I did get into altercation, I said the first time because there was two times, okay, was with my so-called best, she was my best friend. She was like a best friend to me. Um, and we became friends way before I started working for Fidela. She got me the job working there. And then she, you know, she was doing the same exact thing I was doing at the job place. We were, we were marketing reps. We would, we would go around to different um, clinics, hospital facilities and we would sign up patients who didn't have health insurance so we would sign them up basically for medicaid and we would do the marketing for it you know what i'm saying this is what we had to do well she became a supervisor and i became senior vice president for marketing because i had really good numbers and so i was ahead i was in i was ahead of everybody else in the marketing team and I had seniority over a lot of people plus I was able to pick where I was wanting to work and I would train people now mind you once she became um, supervisor for a team she wasn't even my supervisor she was just a supervisor to another department this bitch tried to act like a new brand new person okay so I kind of like grew distance from her meaning sorry the sun is in my face I grew distance from her we weren't hanging out like that anymore. Her name was Alice, okay? We became really distant. And her temperament, her temperament with me was just very, very kind of like, look some bitch. I don't know who the fuck you think you're talking to, but I don't give a fuck who supervisor you are. You ain't my motherfucking supervisor. You may make a couple more coins than me, but you gonna watch who the fuck you talking to. Because remember, at the end of the day, bitch, my name is still April. And I will bust your motherfucking ass up in here, in the parking lot, and then come to your house and bust your motherfucking ass. I could care less, okay? So, anyway, a lot of us reps, we didn't work in the office. We were out in the field a lot. Did this bitch try to have... Oh, did I just dig into this? She tried to have me, I'm going to go ahead and use this cream can to light. She tried to have me spy on her team, on some of her marketing reps, like Maria. Maria was this dark-skinned girl. She was Jamaican, and she kept to herself. She didn't like Alice. When I say she didn't like her, she did not fucking like her. She just didn't trust her, and she had every right not to trust her. You don't have to be friends with everybody you work with, and that was the problem. Alice just felt like because Maria wasn't friend-friendly, she was just work-friendly, that there was an issue. Well, now I'm going to use the dry cans light powder, and I love this because it's so pretty. So, you know what I'm saying? You see that highlight? Do you see that? So, Alice had me spy on, she didn't have me, she asked me to spy, basically, on Maria and a couple of, of her other marketing reps. Now, mind you, she was a supervisor to a team. When I say a team, meaning they worked in one region of New York, meaning I lived in Schenectady, then it was Albany. It's like kind of like boroughs, okay? Like Queens, Brooklyn, same thing, you know what I'm saying? So, Alice had one region, and she wanted me to spy. I was not, not up for spying, you know what I'm saying? Meaning, to see if they really doing their job if they wasn't going home early because we didn't have to clock in bitch i don't give a fuck what they doing because i'm gonna do what the fuck i want to do I, yeah i'm just going home early too i i'm not about to be tattletailing on no motherfucking body that's not why i'm here that's not my job 
So what she did was she got kind of peed off with me. Ooh. Because I didn't spy on somebody for her. Maria. Tried to threaten me with how she would find out if I was working full day. You know, how she seen my car parked in the garage one day when I was supposed to be at work. First of all, bitch, let's mind you, I had a minivan and a goddamn Mercury Sable. A Nissan Quest and a Mercury Sable. Bitch, I don't have to drive the same motherfucking car every day just because you're driving that white Jetta every day does not mean April has to drive the same goddamn car every day. Because that's not what the fuck I was doing. So when she said this to me, I was actually in the office where we was in a closed-in office. She said this to me, and I said, first of all, I don't really give a shit about what you've seen. Okay, because I have two cars. Don't come driving past my house when you work 30 minutes away from my house. Don't do that. The end of, long story short, I ended up threatening that bitch and let her know that she ain't my supervisor and don't ever try to disrespect me because what I will do is I'll go tell upper management how you trying to get me to spy and do your dirty work. Okay, and now you threatening me. Well. It kind of got into an altercation and a bitch like me got really pissed the fuck off because I wasn't able to put hands on her. And me, I like to put hands on you, which is not really good. But if you piss me off that bad, I'm going to want to end up putting some fucking hands on you because that's just how I am. Because you done pissed me the fuck off. Well, we became, we became enemies at that point. We weren't friends anymore. And which that was fine with me. But let me tell you something. When you go to work... Bitch, you got to go to work. Don't go to work for them fucking catty ass bitches and to be their goddamn friends. Because at the end of the day, them bitches will fucking sabotage you for fucking an extra 50 cents in a paycheck. Okay? Bitches in general, it don't even matter if you at the workplace or not. Females in general is catty. Okay? And that's just how it is. Females in general are catty. And I'm sorry to say that because I'm a female. And I know a lot of y'all bitches is catty. I'm going to just turn to fix the blinds. Yeah. Don't mind my little holy shirt. Oh. <sighs> well, you know what? I don't know what to do about this sunlight thing. Oh, it's this one. I'm sorry. Okay, there. It was the next one. Y'all females in general are fucking catty. You know what I'm saying? That's why, for one, I don't have a lot of female friends. Because they're catty. They're always worried about the next bitch. And it's unfortunate that black women always got to put the next black woman down. They start getting jealous and they start getting hateful. And then they always got some shit to say about somebody else. Black people in general, it seems like they don't always want to support nobody else. You know what I'm saying? And if that was the case, there would be more black YouTubers supporting one another. That's another reason why I feel like, you know what I'm saying, when I go to this event, is it going to work out for me in my favor? Because I really don't need no freaking YouTubers that are younger than me and that are African Americans looking at me any type of way because I don't have the amount of subscribers that they have because bitch I've been here before you but I don't need that because the type of person I am I am not a catty person I welcome anyone with open arms I don't give a fuck what color you are I just but that's another reason why I keep to myself because I don't have the tolerance level for a lot of this catty bitch shit okay I'm I'm the one that always walk around with the resting bitch face the bitch resting face whatever the fuck y'all want to call it that's me I walk around like that because I really just kind of stay to myself and keep to myself and stay in my lane because I know what my motherfucking lane is and bitch please don't get up in my lane and don't move over up in that shit because I'll be the first to run your ass the fuck over but females in general are catty it don't even matter what color they are what race they are women in general are catty as well but here's the thing I don't really know what color complexion Drea is just from her name I would think that she's light skinned just because of that reality show and Drea's light skin. I can understand and I can come, um, I can relate with her and um, there's nothing wrong with dark skinned women because I have my, 
dark skin family members i have dark skin i don't have no dark skin friends i don't even have any friends okay in general but i have had the dark skin friends and sometimes you know what i just be so pissed with life that i i used to want to be like dark skin or even brown skin because i get tired of people being like well what what are you where, where are you you know what i'm saying are you black you're not black or they would be quick to tell me i'm not black you're not black you're not black so i would just be like i always would tell like my ex-husband i'm gonna write a book and it's gonna be called i wish i was brown because at least if i was brown people would know that i was black you understand what i'm saying so i can understand how she feel like i have had a lot of dark skinned women that always come at me and they always belittle me or they always try to punk me you know what i'm saying i don't know what it is from an age of a child to still as a grown woman i have i do have dark skinned women that try to punk me you guys know what i'm talking about just like with nicole when she busted my motherfucking windows she tried to punk me because you think because i'm light-skinned and I, like i don't have no balls bitch you got the wrong one i've been through a lot in life just because i'm a fair skinned it don't mean that i can't fight okay but i'm gonna tell y'all what women in general are just catty okay they always bitches. That's they bitches. They just motherfucking bitches, okay? And they're catty. That's why you gotta keep it to yourself and keep like a small selection of friends. But at the workplace, it's the worst. This is how I feel about it. Any workplace. Watch what you say around bitches, okay? Especially at work. Because they'll be the first to smile up in your face and try to dog you out even for a 10 cents motherfucking raise, okay? The worst. And then you got Snow Beast, who is um your your boss. Then you got Snake. And you got your, your boss, Snake, who's telling you, oh, this person ain't no good and this person ain't no good and that person ain't no good. But meanwhile, she don't trust you. Bitch will make you think you so good. You up here talking about everybody. You supposed to be the motherfucking boss you're the one that's supposed to set the example for the whole plantation but yet and still you running around here acting like one of the motherfucking slaves or one of the ignorant assholes okay so you got snake you got snow beast them two is on the same listen let me tell you something the one thing that i will suggest don't tell your business to none of them bitches that were no matter how close you get to them don't invite them over to your motherfucking house is work work and work related nothing past that that's why i would never go out and have drinks with them bitches i wouldn't because they get a couple of drinks in them and they act like they could tell you their whole motherfucking life story and then what they want to do they want you to elaborate and share your shit and if you don't share your motherfucking shit with them they look at you like bitch why you ain't motherfucking telling because bitch we only work friends we we listen there's work friends and there's non-work friends okay and work friends ain't really friends they just people you motherfucking work with and have to be cordial to other than that past five o'clock or whatever time you clock the fuck out bitch i ain't fucking with you and you lucky that you don't have to work in the office the same thing like with me i didn't work in the office i would be driving around and maybe come to the office like once a week and drop off my paperwork if that or twice a week but i never fuck with them bitches and i damn sure didn't hang out with them yeah i might have bought your girl scout cookies because i was supporting the kids it's all about it's always about the children but at the end of the day no bitch don't invite me to nothing because i'm not about to come i'm not about to come there and hang out with you so for me what i would do in that situation watch yourself now who, what's her name the the dark skin girl is snow beast and it's she beast she beast is the dark skin girl watch out for her because she's a cutthroat she's definitely a cutthroat this was also said to me girls uh yes becca's new highlight in lila she's a cutthroat watch out for her um what i would do with her you know what? This is what my mother always told me. The best thing to do in life. To cover your own ass. Always. When somebody says something smart to you. Or talk shit about anybody that you motherfucking know that you work with. You cover your ass at all times. First of all, don't elaborate. Just listen. Be a listening ear to them. You ain't got to fucking elaborate. You ain't got to give your two cents. As bad as you may want to give your two cents, don't. Just listen. So that way that bitch can never go back and say, oh, well, I said this and then she said this. No, bitch. Don't elaborate with the bitch. Just listen. And when the time come, you take your ass to your desk or to your house and you write down on September 12th or September 13th, snow beach was sitting over here to me at whatever time if you can remember about wildebeest or whatever and such and such was said listen that's what i had to end up doing because 
I got in some shit at work with fucking Alice's ass and Jeff, the manager, because he was talking shit about somebody else and was talking that shit to me. And then when I went and told the supervisor, the upper management on his ass, because he started harassing the girl. Do you know this bitch, the upper management tried to pull some okie doke shit with me. I had to pull out my motherfucking paper, my notebook paper, pen and pad and be like, oh no, because on this day, they looked at me like this bitch is crazy. I sure did because you ain't never about to sit here and tell me you did not say anything try to go back on their word and say oh I didn't say this and I didn't say that and I didn't say this and I didn't say that no yes the fuck you did on September 13th at 4 35 you called me back from that meeting and you was in the office and these are the exact words that you said to me do you do you not remember and this is what I said to you I carried that notebook around. I sure did and pulled that shit out. Now what? They just looked at me like this black bitch is fucking crazy. And I bet you I didn't get into none of their bullshit again. You know what they did? Because they couldn't fuck with me and they didn't have nothing on me. And it all ended up because I made more money than them. And I wasn't even upper management. I didn't have to do as much as them. But I made more money than them because I was there for over nine years. And them bitches have been there for like two. Okay? They was trying to get rid of me. So what did they do? Oh, well, your numbers are not meeting up, so we're going to have to let you go. Good, bitch, because I wanted to motherfucking go. I got tired of y'all bitches any motherfucking way. So let me collect my unemployment check because that shit's going to be over $500 every week. Plus, I got a YouTube motherfucking check, and I got a storefront that I own, too. So, um, yeah, fire me because I'm good. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Keep you a pen and pad and write down everything that was said and don't elaborate on them bitches. Don't let them fuck up your coins for real. Do not because bitches are good for fucking up somebody's money and I'll be damned. Because once they fuck up your money, you don't want to fuck their asses up. Stay your distance. Don't elaborate. Write down what the fuck you heard and keep it pushing. Yes. And on that note, let Dre know what you would do in this situation. All of the information for all the products that I use will be in this video description below. You guys know, check out Oxley. You can get some amazing free stuff. I mean, come on, Kevin Aquan. I got Mac shit. I got Becca Cosmetics. I got a bunch of really nice free shit. I mean, I'm saying though, a girl and I got Lancome love free stuff and especially if it's high end free stuff max skin finish okay i'm saying where's you getting that free nowhere so i love you guys stay diva and delicious make sure you rate comment subscribe and i will see you in a soon to come video and thank you everyone for showing all of your love and blessings and reaching out to me and i do apologize if i have not returned any of the emails but i want to say thank you genuinely in this email for just checking up on me and i'm doing good and yes i miss my son but you know what it is what it is and i just love you you all and I will see you guys soon.